All right. I want to start off by giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah, and which is our big brother, our Lord, and our Savior, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, the Rakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who teach and rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the whole field elect. All right. As you can see on the screen, man, I'm finna get into these uh two quick videos right quick. And uh they basically talking about uh the recession that's coming, man. In in all actuality, man, you know the recession is inevitable, man. And I think that's what I'm entitled this video, man. Recession is inevitable. Meaning it's gonna happen, man. You know, ain't no way around it, man. Because this place, it has to go down before the kingdom can be ushered in, man. You know, and this place is, is going to crumble from the inside, man. You know. The first video from CBS News, it says the inverted yield curve sparks recession fears. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah, you should be scared of the recession, man. Because, you know, once we go into this recession, man. Ain't no coming back, man. Ain't no getting up off the ground, man. You know, it ain't going to be no rebuilding after this recession, man. You know, the economy is not going to be built back up by, with some miraculous, you know, with some miraculous type of idea, man. Because in all actuality, man, the Heavenly Father is in control of miracles, man. <laughs> and and it's, it's, it's his wishes, man. You know, it's his prophecies that this place is going to be brought to a low, all-time low, man. You know, even destruction, man, desolation. So, you know, I'm going to get into these quick video, two quick videos. Like I said, I'm going to bring out some scriptures, man. Hopefully, brothers and sisters will be edified through the spirit and power of your heart by Shem, your heart shot, man. So, let's get the first video right quick. Damn, man. So like you for the ads. And fears of a recession sparked the downturn over what's known as the inverted yield curve. Don Daler reports from the New York Stock Exchange. The closing bell on Wall Street was a sour note for investors Wednesday as a key indicator in the bond market signaled the recession could be on its way. You know, and I want to pause it right there right quick because those people you just saw, man, they had <laughs> big ass cheesy smiles on their face man like everything is all good man giving the people a false sense of hope man when it is really in all actuality man there is no more hope man the only hope is left man is the hope for elect man hoping in your how about shem y'all was shot that he raised us up out of this hell hole man that's the only hope that's left man let's go CBS News okay. business analyst Jill Schlesinger. What investors are telling us is that they're quite uncertain about the future. They're worried about what stocks are going to do in the future. They're worried about what the economy is going to do in the future. For the first time in more than a decade, the yield for the 10-year bond dipped below the yield for the two-year bond. That means investors are more willing to bet on the short-term economy than the outlook for the long term. So an inverted yield curve can be a signal that things will slow down in the future and has often been a sign of recession. The Fed moved, in my opinion, far too early and far too severely. President it's Trump has been quick to blame the Federal Reserve's actions on interest rates, tweeting crazy inverted yield curve. We should easily be reaping big rewards and gains, but the Fed is holding us back. But analysts point to other... And you know, I want to pause it right there right quick because, you know... <laughs> And that's what's going on, man. These red Hebrew Edomites, they point the finger at each other, man. You know, Trump says that the feds are to blame. When he putting he putting um sanctions on everybody, man. Come on, man. And then when you wanna put sanctions on China when they control like more than eighty percent of the rare earth minerals, and you wanna put sanctions on them, man? Come on, man. That's a very prideful act, man. That's why this place is about to be destroyed, man. You know? So, let's get some more of the video. Other factors as well, including the U.S. trade war with China and economic slowdowns in Germany, France, and the U.K. 
Now the question is, how quickly will the Federal Reserve act to stave off further slowdowns? Or when the president and the administration will sit down with China and remove this cloud of uncertainty? <laughs> yeah, man, a cloud of uncertainty, man. You, you're not going to remove the cloud of uncertainty. Why? Because you how about Shami how shot control the clouds too, man. <laughs> yeah. Y'all gonna learn that pretty soon, man. So let's get the other video right quick. A lot of folks on Wall Street, Main Street, concerned about the prospects for a recession. How would a president, Bernie Sanders, prevent another economic recession? Well, look, you know, I think what everybody understands now is we're coming near the end of the Obama recovery. Uh, and we're now about to... See, he want to bring up Obama into this. Since we're coming to the end of the you know, Obama Whatever he, whatever the hell he said about <laughs> Obama, in which you know we we all know Obama is a hamite. He's not one of us, you know. So, uh, the bullshit Mitch uh, Moscow Mitch said, you know, we we gave you a black president, man. <laughs> we don't give a damn. You heard me, you know. Obama is not one of us, man. Obama is not an Israelite, man. You know, he's a so-called black man, but he's not an Israelite. He's a hamite. So miss us with that bullshit, man. You know, we seeing this recession, man, because we coming to the end of you wicked rulers rulership, man. Now the kingdom of heaven is about to be ushered in, man. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, man. Enter the Trump recession. Uh, and what we have got to do is make sure that we protect the most vulnerable people in this country. We've got to raise wages. We've got to make sure that we protect people's houses uh, so that people don't lose what they did in the last recession. That's in terms sure. of the U.S.-China trade deal, or the lack there of a deal, Senator Sanders, other folks in the, in the Democratic field have, have argued that tariffs might be a, a needed tool to negotiate with other countries. How would a President Sanders' trade policy differ from how President Trump is negotiating with the Chinese? Well, we should be clear. Bernie Sanders voted against all of these job-killing trade deals, uh, NAFTA, PNTR, and so on and so forth. But the difference is, is that Donald Trump has gone in and dealt with this with a hand grenade, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to having real sit-down discussions, uh, you know, he goes in there and, and it's mostly bluster and, and puffery causes the other side to engage in the same kind of conduct. We need to sit down and have real discussions about how we move forward uh, with a trade relationship which benefits working people in both countries. But tariffs tariffs are a tool that, that can be utilized uh, in negotiations. Would, would Senator Sanders agree well, with they, that? I mean, well, they certainly are a tool. Obviously, they're in the Constitution, so they are a tool. But, you know, tariffs are a last, last, last resort. Uh, and the goal is to make sure that you have trade agreements on the front end uh, which cannot be abused as easily as the ones we currently have. So that's job number one. In terms of our relationship with China, we've got to get back to the table. We've got to start having real discussions uh, as opposed to a lot of chest pumping. I was struck by this and in talking with staffers on the Sanders campaign just as the debate continues to move forward within the Democratic primary about USMCA, for example. There hasn't been too much chatter, ch chatter about that in particular. We did see it at the last debate. Uh, Senator Sanders says he's going to vote against USMCA. Yes, Why? Yes. Well, look, I mean, one of the main, main problems with many of these agreements is that you give up U.S. sovereignty. You're not going to have an international panel which is going to tell the federal government of the United States, the state governments, and the local governments what regulations they can and, not, can and cannot have governing you know, the economy, governing the environment, and so on and so forth. You know, that is a fundamental giving up of American sovereignty to corporate interests, and that's just not... So you would you would propose that a Sanders administration would really just go back to the drawing board with Mexico and Canada? Uh, absolutely. And I, look, and I think you know what we've seen in the news is there's an appetite on both of their parts to have a a real trade agreement, which is very very. I just got to stop it right there because he said he made a point saying something about American sovereignty, man. American sovereignty, man. You know that's the hypocrisy of you you, you Hebrew Edomites, man. You red Hebrew Edomites, man. You know, how in the hell is America a sovereign nation, man, when this land is stolen, man? This land was stolen, man, from the Gadites. You know what I'm saying? The Reubenites, man. The tribe of Gad, the Native American Indians, man, so-called Native American Indians, man. In all actuality, they're Gadites, man. Their blood was shed on this land, man. It's recompense for that, man. You know, you devils got to pay for that, man. That's why you see this place going down, man. This is stolen land, man. You know, your end is at hand, man. 
Now it's time for recompense, man. The children of Israel are waking up to who they are now, man. They're waking up to their true power and their nationality, man, that was stolen from us by you red Hebrew Edomites and all you other nations that conspire with them. Let's go. Different than NAFTA, and I think that's what we have to do. All right, so just within the news in the past couple of hours, uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, banning two progressive congresswomen from going to Israel. What's the Sanders' response been to that? Well, look, you know, uh, Israel's one of our strong allies in the Middle East. We provide them a lot of uh, assistance. But let's be clear, that government, and that's not Israel, it's the government of Israel, uh, has been engaged in some really bad policies, which are uh, holding that country back, that are put, pushing down the Palestinians. You know, uh, there's a lot of... When you criticize the government of Israel, you get some pushback. But, you know, you can be firmly uh, American and criticize the American government, just like you can with Israel. And I think uh, that the Netanyahu government, which has obviously uh, been alleged to have been engaged in a tremendous amount of corruption uh, and far-right policies, is, it's a very unhealthy situation. Is this Joe Biden's party? The Democratic Party? <laughs> no, 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 I don't know that it's ever been Joe Biden's party, frankly, but uh, let me put it this way. You know, the rank and file of the Democratic Party uh, has moved substantially in a more progressive direction. Like, they understand that the way you beat Trump, the way you transform the economy, is to move the country in a very different direction. That makes sure that the economy and the government work for a much broader range of people in this country. I'm not going to ask you to, to criticize Senator Elizabeth Warren. I know your, your friends, the yeah, Senator from the Warren campaign. What's the biggest difference on policy between Senator Elizabeth Elizabeth Warren and Senator Bernie Sanders. Well, look, there are a number of policy differences, but I think, look, I think the, to the point that you just made, and I think we saw this in the last debate, right. is that there's just a discussion going on in the party right now, a much bigger discussion than personalities about what direction the party is going to go moving forward. And you have a more progressive wing, and you have the old corporatist wing, right, which is sort of withering at the grassroots. And I think what we'll see as you get closer to the actual dates of voting, that voters will then start to pick the individual person. But right now, uh, there's a debate going on about the direction of the country and the progressive of wing of the party is Last question for one more thing he said something about the voters man you know all of these candidates and presidents man all these people are selected by the elites man you know you want to say democrats this republicans that left wing this right wing that when both wings are on the same bird man and if these wings are flapping against each other man the bird is not gonna fly man this bullshit ain't gonna fly, man. Until you Israelites, man, stay away from the polls, man. You know, elect these 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 polls are not for us, man. We supposed to, you know, if we gonna elect somebody to be over us, it's somebody of our nation, man, of our brethren, man. That's why you never seen an Israelite in the presidency, man, cause it ain't for us, man. This ain't our risk. This ain't our kingdom, man. But our kingdom is at hand, man. It's about to come. Let's get some more. Sure. Lots well, have been made of Medicare for All and Senator Kamala Harris's proposed Medicare for Plan. Is Kamala Harris's Medicare plan Medicare for All? Uh, no, absolutely not. Look, uh, it relies on private insurance companies. There is no way you can provide health care for all Americans, comprehensive health care, uh, without getting rid of the private insurers and substantially lowering the cost of prescription drugs in the country. The only way you can do that is with a single insurance pool of Americans, uh, and her plan does not do that. Yep, that bullshit out of here. Prescription drugs, man. Legal drugs. Legal drug dealers. You know, that's all you read Hebrew Edomites are, man. Legal drug dealers. You know? Physicians of no value. Because, basically, when you start taking all these drugs, man, you get more damn side effects than, than, than the, the illness that you really trying to cure, man. You get more side effects, man. Than anything, man. So that's why you are physicians of no value, man. <laughs> Bullshit ass drugs, man. That's why as Israelites, we need to come back to the spirit and power of Yahweh by by Shem Yahweh shot, man. Cause Yahweh by Shem Yahweh shot, man. He kill, he make alive, he wound, he heal. He is our power, man. Not these fucking drugs, man. That they pushing out legally, man. So now from there, I want to get this word recession that I got queued up. It's from the um, Edemon Online. It says recession, 1640s, act of receding, a going back 
from French from French recession a going backward. Yeah, man. That's what this place is for to do, man. It's getting ready to go backwards, man. Ultimately, it's getting ready to go down, man. Back down to the ground, man. You know? It says a withdrawing. And directly from Latin recessionum. Nominative recessio. A going back noun of action from past participle stem of recidier. To go back, fall back, withdraw. Fall back. <laughs> yeah. Withdraw, depart, retire. Mm-hmm. From re back. Uh sit there to go. Uh so like it. Let's go ahead and scroll on down. This is the point. It says sense of temporary decline. And when you look at that word decline, man, decline means to go down. Incline means to go up. So it says a sense of temporary decline in economic activity, 1929. Because I think back in like 1929 was when the very first recession hit, man. 1929, 1930, that's when they came up with the idea of giving everybody uh, uh, birth certificates, you know, and social security cards. That's why everybody, every man, woman, and child is its own entity, man. You know, you got you got millions, maybe billions, how, however old you are, on your social security, on your birth certificate, man. You know, that's why your name is in all caps, man. America is a corporation, man. You know, but you will never see all that money, man, because it's in the Federal Reserve, man. You'll never see that money, man. It says, now of action from recess. It says the material prosperity of the United States is too firmly based, in our opinion, for a revival in industrial activity. Even if we have to face an immediate recession of some magnitude to be long delayed. And that comes from the economist, economist uh, November 2nd, 1929. Yeah, man. But... The, the the point that I really wanted to make was uh when it says sense of temporary decline. Nah man, this decline here, man, it's not gonna be temporary, man. You know? <laughs> this temple this 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 decline here, man, is gonna be permanent, man. You know? Because this is the last captivity for the nation of Israel, man. And you two-thirds that don't want to wake up, man, of the nation of Israel, man. You so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. You're going to be put to death on this side, man. Because you refuse to come back to the spirit and power. Your heart by shot, y'all shot, man. Your heavenly father, man, sent his only begotten son, man, to shed his blood, man. We were bought with a price, man. The price of your heart shot blood, man. You know? You know? That's... It's only right, man, because our big brother, man, he shed his blood for us, man, because he loved us, man. I don't know nobody that'll die for me, man, and shed their blood for me, man. Nobody but your shot, man, he did that, and I believe it with all my heart, man. He walked on this earth as a natural man in the flesh. He had to take on everything we had to take on, man, all the sins we were fa we faced with, he was faced with, man. But he did it perfectly, man. You know, that's why he is the lamb without blemish, man. He is worthy, man. But, so from now, I'm going to bring out some scriptures right quick, man. And I'm going to leave that sense of temporary decline in economic activity, man. Because, like I say, man, this is going to be a permanent, a permanent decline, man. You know, it's over with, man. Once the economy crash, man, you know... <laughs> The dollar is the dollar is gonna be over with, man. Cause it ain't backed by gold for one. And when the economy crash, man, you might well all you rappers, man, that this hold that hold the stacks up to your ears like you like you're talking on telephone, man. You know, you might well take all that money, man, and use it for toilet paper, man. Wipe your ass with, man. You know. Or burn it in a barrel, man, to try to keep warm, man. When they when the day when they cut out the damn lights, man. Better hope your flight is not in the winter, man. 
So, now let's get into some quick scriptures right quick, man. Yeah, I'm going to take this off the screen, but just remember that sense of temporary decline, man. This is going to be a permanent decline, man. So, what I'm going to do now is pull out my Bible out right quick. Holy Bible with the King James Version Apocrypha. And I'm going to start in the book of Obadiah. Obadiah 1 and 3. It says, The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, the real cave dwellers, you know, you Caucasians, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Come. And that's what you read Hebrew Edomites say, man, because you're high-minded, man. You're very proud. You say, who shall bring me down to the ground? So, that's what we about to go into, man. Because like I say, man, this reset, it said a decline in, in, in the economy. So like it said, a decline in the economy, man. And that's what's about to happen, man. You finna be brought down to the ground, man. By this economic crash, man. So, we finna prove that with scriptures, man, and how it's gonna be done, man. So, from there, I'm gonna get 2 Ezra. 2 Ezra, chapter 6, 7 through 10. It says, Then answer I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of times? This is Ezra. Or when shall be. The end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first Esau, Slackia, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Now you got the picture that, man, you know, Two twin babies coming out of their mama womb, man. The first one came out red. They called his name Esau, man. You know, then his brother came out, Jacob. They didn't describe him, man, because Jacob was normal, man. You know, Jacob looked, Jacob had the color of his mother and father, man. He was a so-called black man, you know. It says, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Now you got to imagine these two babies coming out, man. And the second one that's coming out, he got the, he got his brother by the heel, man. You know? <laughs> man, that would have been a sight to see for me, man. You know? <laughs> it says, verse 9, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. The hand of man is betwixt the heel and the hand. Or the question, Ezra, ask thou not. Come so, yeah, man, like the scriptures say, man, <laughs> Jacob's hand held Esau's heel, man. And Esau is the forefather of you red Hebrew Edomites, man. It's 18 nations within the Bible, man. All 18 nations, including the, is the nation of Israel, are still on the, upon the face of the earth today, man. All the nations are still upon the face of the earth today, man. You know, and you got to remember that, you know, Jacob's hand held Esau's heel as we progress in the scriptures. All right. Now from there, let me get a quick, let me get a, let's see, let's get second Corinthians right quick. I don't want to make this too long and I don't want, I don't want to lose people, man, because I'm going into these precepts. I'm going to them real quick. So it's second, I mean, second Corinthians chapter 10. And uh, verse 3, it says, it says, for, so like you. okay, it says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. It says, so like you. yeah, yeah, for. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. All right, now, I'm going to get a quick precept, then I'm going to come back to verse 4. Because we walk in the flesh, but we do not war after the flesh. So, now let's get let's get another scripture to prove that. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to be,
going to be Ephesians. Ephesians 6 and 12. Because we do not war after the flesh. It says, for we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. And which are the elites, you know, they, they run in both sides, you know, the Democrats and the Republicans. It says against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, that's what we wrestle against, man. I'm going to read it again. It says, for we, was, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Because the, because the scripture also tells us the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, man. You know, who running the world today, man? Whose face is on the money, man? You read Hebrew Edomites, man. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now let's go back, man. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. It says... For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds. And that's why this economy is getting ready to crash, man. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds. And who's holding, who's holding the Israelites in captivity right now, man? All you other nations, man, mainly you red Hebrew Edomites, man. Y'all got a stronghold on us, man. The scriptures say they they held they held Judah and Israel fast, man. Y'all hold us fast and don't don't want to let us go, man. You know, just roughly paraphrasing that. So verse five, it says, Salakia. Let's read Second Corinthians. 10 and 4. One more time. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds. Alright, now from there, let's go to 2 Ezra. Again. 2 Ezra 6 and 8. It says, Selakia. I lost my precept. So like, yeah. Hold on. Yeah, I already read that. Okay. They go with Brian and Jacob's hand. Hell first the heel of Esau. Salakia. So like, yeah. That ain't the one I want. I already read that. So my bad. Let's go back, uh let's go back to uh Second Corinthians and get ten and five. Ten and five. Lost my train of thought right quick. Alright, so it says, this is 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, casting down imaginations, you know, and uh, we're going to get into that imagination, man, what they imagine. It says, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of the Most High, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Hamashiach. So, from there, I'm going to get a precept to back that up. This is uh so gonna go into Psalms. The book of Psalms. It's like yeah. There it is. The book of Psalms, chapter two, verses one through eight. It says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Yeah, man, because all your imaginations are vain, man. You think you think once you get everybody, you know, chip with the microchip, that you're going to set up your one world government and all that kind of stuff, man. But that's a vain thing that you imagine, man, because your Howard shot is getting ready to come back, and, man, and subdue all you nations, man. You know, and the wicked elite, man, you going into captivity, man. So the thing that you imagine, man, is vain, man. Verse 2, it says, the kings of the earth set themselves. Yep, you set yourselves in the power, man. All you presidents, man. You know, these people are set into place, man. Your damn votes don't matter, man. 
That's why us Israelites don't supposed to be going to the polls, man. And voting for these wicked people, man. It says the kings of the earth set themselves, man. And the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder, meaning they don't want no dealing with us, man. You know, it says, and cast away their cards from us. You know, let's, let's break ties with these people. We don't want nothing to do with them. It says, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. You know, that's right. It says, yet have I set slack you. Verse 5, they shall, then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. Yahweh have said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Verse 8, Ask of me, and I shall give thee, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. That's right, man. See, you heathens are promised to us for an inheritance, man. <laughs> Meaning we gonna own you people, man. Just like you own us right now. You know, for this time being, our Heavenly Father going to work some up in the spirit, man. He going to send your house shot back, man. And your house shot going to take over this place, man. He going to take over the whole earth, man. You know, and we going to possess you for an inheritance, man. All you other nations that are not Israelites, man. We going to possess you. Meaning we going to take ownership over you, man. It says, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Now, I'm finna get another quick precept to back that up, man. I'm finna go to Isaiah right quick. The prophet Isaiah, man. Isaiah 14, 1 through 2. Isaiah 14, 1 through 2. It says, For the for Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans, man, and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave unto the house of Jacob. Verse 2, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Servants and handmaids, man. Those are slaves, man. In the land of the Lord, man, it's going to be some slaving going on in the land of the Lord, man. But guess what? <laughs> it's not going to be us Hebrew Israelites, man. You know? You know, it's not going to be us, man. It's going to be you other nations that's going to be slaving, man. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors, man. See that? <laughs> that's self-explanatory, man. You know, now let's get another quick precept right quick. Psalms 2 and 9. Just like it. Psalm 2, verse 9. It says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. See that? <laughs> yeah, man. Gonna dash them into pieces like a potter's vessel. You know? And let's get another quick precept. In the, still in the book of Psalms, man. It's Psalms 137. Psalm 137, 1 through 9. It says, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yeah, we wept when we remember Zion. Because we was carried away captives, man. It says, we hanged our harps, and it was by ships. And it says, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, sing us one of those, sing, of, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing? Yahweh's song in a strange land. If I forget the old Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. 
if I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. See that man? Let me read verse 9 again. It says, Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. Now let's go back to what Psalm 2 and 9 said. It says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. See, man? Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, man, gonna give us the power, man. Lord willing, I'm one of those men, man, that's gonna get that spiritual power, man. You know, if not, you know, hopefully I can endure in this truth until the end, man. If I have to die in this truth, man, so be it, man. I'm tired of this damn place anyway, man. You know, having all these wicked ass rulers over us, man. Teaching the children how to be fucking transgenders, man. Man, that's some evil shit, man. That's some real evil shit, man. So let's go to 2 Corinthians. 10 and 6. It says, And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled, you know, we're going to be ready to revenge all disobedience, man. And bring that shit under subjection, man, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Shah, man. Ultimately, when Yahweh Shah come back, man. So it's up to us to get in obedience with these scriptures, man. Because when we get in obedience with these scriptures, man, and which is Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Shah is these scriptures. You know, when we get back into obedience with these scriptures and it's fulfilled, you know, the prophecies are going to be sped up, man. Then this place is going to go through the, its destruction phase, man. You know, that's when this place is going to be ultimately destroyed, man. You know, when, the ch when, when us children of Israel, man, Wake up, man, and come back to the obedience of the Heavenly Father, man. You know, through Yahweh Shai, man. Because no man can get to the Father but through Yahweh Shai, man. We got to come back to the obedience of Yahweh Shai, man. So I'm going to read it again, 2 Corinthians 10 and 6. And having and a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled, man. Because ultimately, the Heavenly Father, you know, he called us back in Jeremiah 51 and 20. Hold on, let's just get that right quick. Jeremiah. Let so like Jeremiah 51 and 20, you know. He says... Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. See that, man? Through us, he is going to destroy kingdoms, man. He is going to break in pieces the nations, man. He called us his battle axe and weapons of war, man. Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is a man of war, man. He is a man of war, man. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians 10 and 6, man. It says, have, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, man. All the wickedness, man, of this place, man, is going to be put in subjection, man. Yahweh is going to come back and rule in righteousness, man. Let's get Isaiah 47. Back to the prophet Isaiah again, man. I love the book of Isaiah, man. Got some beautiful prophecies in that, man. Book of Isaiah 47. 
All the prophets, all the prophets got beautiful prophecies, man. One through fifteen, it says, cause this is the point, man. <laughs> it says a decline in the economy, man. And I started out with the scripture in Obadiah one and three, man. It says, Who shall bring me down to the ground, man? This is the point, man. Isaiah forty seven and one. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstone and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover thy thigh. Pass over the rivers. Yeah, man, because in all actuality, man, this is the heavenly father's doing, man. You know, through the spirit and power of your heart by Shem, I was shy, man. Your nakedness is being uncovered, man, for who you really are, man. You are the devils that the Bible speak of, man. You red Hebrew Edomites, man. You know, and you're going into slavery and captivity. You feel me? It says, you know, thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yeah, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. For our Redeemer... The Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness. Yeah, because that's where y'all supposed to be anyway, man. Into darkness, man. You call us, you know, blacks. And in and, and all actuality, you are the real blacks. You read Hebrew Edomite are the real blacks. Because when you look at the word white, that means pure and everything good, man. You're not white, man. You're red. Then you call us blacks because that means everything opposite of white, man. So get y'all ass into darkness, man. And sit down and be quiet, man. O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt not be called the lady of kingdoms. It says, I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance. Yeah, because he did this to us, man. The Heavenly Father did this to us for our disobedience, man. That's how we know your how by Shem, your how shy is real, man. Because these scriptures, man, give us all the faith in the world, man. All the faith in the world, man. We are rich in faith, man. Mainly the elect, man, the 144,000, man. You know, and the rest of the innumerable multitude, man. The elect, man, the one third, man. We got faith in your how by Shem, your how shy, man. He was wroth with us, man. He did this to us, man. You know. And our forefathers deserved it, man. You know, a lot of us still deserve it, man. That's why the elect is waking up, and you two-thirds, man. Y'all ass gonna be destroyed, man. It says, I was wroth with my people. I have polluted my inheritance and given them into thine hand. He gave us into y'all hands, you red Hebrew Edomites. Thou did show them no mercy. Y'all haven't showed us no mercy, man. You know, you, you come up with your ice bullshit, you know. You're sending, you're sending the northern kingdom out of here, man. Leaving their damn children stranded, man. You got their children stranded, man, without parents. You're showing them no mercy, man. And the ones, you know, that do, that are legal immigrants, you know, you're trying to take food stamps from them. Come on, man. The scriptures say, Thou did show them no mercy. Upon the ancient has thou verily has thou very heavily laid thy yoke, and thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. You know, you did all of this to the nation of Israel, but you never thought what was gonna happen to you at the end, man. That's what this scripture is saying. And thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever, Lady Liberty, you know, the women worship, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart. You didn't take it to your heart, man. You didn't, and the heart is the mind, man. You didn't keep it on your mind, man. Neither didst thou, rip. see, it says, neither didst thou remember. You can't remember with your heart, man. You remember with your mind. It says, neither didst thou didst remember the latter end of it. You didn't consider what would happen to you at the end, man. The Heavenly Father is a just power, man. He is a just power, man. It says, therefore, hear now this. 
thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But guess what? The scriptures say, but these two things shall come to thee in a moment, in one day. The loss of children and widowhood, they shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries, your witchcraft, and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. Steal your witchcraft. Because this place, you know, this place is based on Freemasonry, man. You know, when you look at when you look at the Pentagon, man, the Pentagon is the center of the pentagram. Pure wickedness. Verse 10 says, For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee, you know, <laughs> with all these, with all these shooting, these mass killings, you know, pestilence, teeth of wild beasts. You know, I was just watching a video, you know, where this, this red Hebrew Edomite family, man, they was on a camping trip, man. And a wolf got at their ass, man. You know, almost killed the father, man. A guy in a nearby tent had to come save him, man. You know, teeth of wild animals gonna rip you to shreds, man. It says, therefore shall evil come upon thee, thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. And mainly, you know, that's those nuclear missiles, man. Nuclear missiles is going <laughs> to, nuclear missiles are going to obliterate this place, man. You know. You sleeping here, motherfuckers, man. <laughs> hey, man. Death and destruction is coming to this place, man. And you Israelites that want to join hands with them, or you wicked-ass Israelites that wearing those MAGA hats, man. Hey, consider yourself a two-third, man, if you don't wake up, man. It's going to be destroyed on this side. Verse 11, it says, Stand now with thine enchantments, and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. You know, ever since a miracle was created, man, it's been only enchantments and sorcery, man. It says, if so be thou shalt be able to profit, if so be thou mayest prevail. Thou art weary in the multitude of thy counsel. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up, you know. And those are, those are, those are mainly the crystal ball readers. You know, the tarot card readers, all them motherfuckers, man. It says, stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble, going to get burnt the hell up. The fire shall burn them, con. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. And we know that the scriptures tell us our heavenly father is a consuming fire. So he going to put the flame upon your ass. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit it before to sit before it. Thus shall they be unto thee, with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee, man. See, this place is headed for destruction, man. You know, and all you want to be Christian, man. They know you Israelites, man, and still want to sit up under them wicked-ass pastors, man. You know, you're going to be destroyed, man, if you ain't getting this wisdom knowledge, you know, from the from the prophets, from the real prophets that are out on the highways and byways, man. You know, the scriptures tell us that the Most High going to give us prophets according to his heart. <coughs> so like it. Prophets according to his heart, man. Not these wicked ass pastors that just want your money, man. You know, Creflo, wicked ass dollar, man. Want two jet planes, man. You know, what the hell can you do with two jet planes, man? Really? Come on, man. You know, TD wicked ass snakes, Jakes. You know, and I believe he a homosexual, man. If you ask me, man. 
you know? All these wicked pastors, man, that ain't teaching our people that they're the Israelites that the Bible talk about, man. And why they ain't gonna teach that, man? Because, man, the, mainly, the probably the majority of their money coming from the red Hebrew Edomites, man. They don't want to screw up their money, man, that they getting in every year, man. You know, they under that 501c3, man. You know, tax exempt. They don't have to pay much, pay taxes on that money, man. You know, that's straight profit, man. Straight profit coming into that church, man. And look at all these wicked ass pastors with these mega churches, man. Got all these people, man. They 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 in damn coliseums and stuff, man. Packed out, man. You know. You sitting in the nosebleed section just to look at T D Jakes or somebody, man. You could barely even see him. You got to look at him on the screen, man. You know, these places holding 70,000, 80,000 people easy, man. And he getting all that money, man. He getting all that money from you people, man. Tax free, man. And the scriptures say if the blind lead the blind, or they both shall fall in the ditch, man. You know, all people perish for a lack of knowledge, man, that these pastors ain't giving them. You know, that's why the most I call them wicked. And they're going to be destroyed, man, and they wickedness. All because they love filthy lucre. So with that being said, man, a barber ball, you know, destroy Babylon, and which is America, you know, DTA, which is Delta to America, man. This place is finished, man. This place is going down, man. You know, through the spirit and power of your whole by Shem, y'all was shot, man. It's time for us to wake up, man. Wake up and come back to our power, man, before he destroy this place, man. You know, with that being said, I'm going to say all praises, all praises, infinite praises, glory and honor to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. In the name of our big brother, our Lord, our Savior, our terrible great King, Yahweh Shah, you know, and in the Spirit of the Holy, and the Holy Spirit, man, the Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles, the elder apostles, you know, the elders on down to his younger brothers, man, you know, I want to say double honors, man, you know, peace, blessings, and salutations to the whole for elect, man, Shalom.